guys, it's Penelope, and today we have some special guests. Queen Scarab, Princess Tasha, and Princess Spots are going to assist us at the end of our show after the credits, so be sure to stick around. Today, we're going to be working on weaving. Yay! It's going to be really fun, So, and these are the materials you need. You need some cardboard, preferably an old Amazon Prime box wall would be nice because they have little guidelines that help you make the loom. Thank you, Amazon. You need scissors that can cut cardboard. You need regular scissors and yarn. Where, where's the yarn? Oh, there it is. Here's the yarn. Let's see, what colors of yarn am I going to use today? Hmm. Could do a nice blend of red and orange, or maybe some, ah, I know. I'll do some yellow and I'll do some green. I have both my greens are ready and ready to go. Now, we're going to learn how to weave, we're gonna learn how to make the loom, we're going to make the loom, learn how to weave, and how to finish the weave. And then, we're, after the credits, we're going to have a bonus scene, a funny bonus scene. So stick around and watch it. All right, to make the loom, first take your, your cardboard, like this, and then I have the center of the cardboard. You see how it's a bit smaller? We're going to take our cardboard cutting scissors and cut it out just like this, along the guidelines. So it should make a nice crunch. Don't worry if you have to press a bit hard or go to another side. It's perfectly okay if you take a break from one side. But once you finish cutting out that, that one section, move on to the second section. All right, let's move on to the next guideline. If you want, you can flip it around and cut on the other side until you reach the point. Oh, and then we're done. Save these other pieces aside. But we're not done with our scissors yet. We, ha we now have the basic gist of our loom. We're going to be doing it on this side, the flat side. And we're going to start by making six little, little flaps right up to a guideline, okay? Flap number one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, see how we have them? Now we're going to bend the first one down, like this, and then we're gonna bend it like that. Do repeat until all of them have been done. All right, now we're going to do the next side, but we need to make sure it's perfectly accurate. So you're going to take your scissors and you're going to trace a little line down. Then make sure that it's perfectly lined up with the cardboard. You can even take your finger 
and trace it. Then you cut there where your finger is. Not on your finger, of course. Right there, just like that. All right, good job. You made another slot. Now do the same thing. All right, we're going to repeat this process, finding the line, tracing it down, and cutting. And then we're going to cut right in the middle of the two of the last remaining slits. Now, let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six flaps. Wow. You can make a loom, though, with eight flaps. But now, we're going to start the loom. Now, we're going to do something tricky that I call we weaving the baseline. The baseline is the is the line that is the base of the weave. You can't have the you can't have all the fancy decorative stuff without the baseline. Make sure you get a lot of baseline off. We're going to weave half of this. Take your regular scissors and cut the baseline right at the end. Like that. All right. Now let's start. Take the end of the thread you just cut off and put the flap down. Now, now put it up. All right, now you're going to weave a knot in the thread. An X knot. Make sure you hit it until you can't pull it out. Now you're going to take your, your regular scissors. You won't need the cardboard cutting scissors anymore, so you can just put those aside. Now you're going to snip it, leaving enough so that you can it doesn't cut the knot itself. It's important to have a it, to store all of your scraps because you'll never know when you can use them. This is the type of weave we're going to make today. It is a three baseline thread weave. Deco it's in pink colors. And we're going to make that. So we're going to take our loom and we're going to stretch it. Make sure it's nice and taut, but not too taut. Then we're going to take this yarn and put it around this one and stretch it back down. That's two baselines. Now we're going to pop this up and now we're going to stretch. Hang on, what happened here? Hang on. Hang on a minute. What's going on here? I demand to know what is going on. Hang on, we are experiencing some yarn difficulties. Which is not good. Now we are going to start over. This time we're going to do this. And we're going to wrap, hang on a minute, we're actually going to, sometimes these things happen, so we're just going to snip this part off. Like I said, weaving the baseline can be tough. All right, so now we are 
going to start the bass line over again since we experienced bad knots. That can happen sometimes. And speaking of knots, there are some knots that are bad. They're called accidental knots and you don't want them in your weaving. But we'll get to that later. Now anyway, as I did before, we're going to take the thread and we're going to make an X knot. Like that. Unraveling going on. Ah! Let's just re-thread this through. All right. Now we're going to snip this part off. Put it in our scrap pile. Now, just like before, we're going to thread this through and then we're going to go around here. Make sure we pull tight, but not too tight. We don't want this thread to unravel. And we're going to do it again, and we're going to pull around. We're gonna pull this tab out. Oh, we might just have enough thread. Oh, we don't have enough thread, oh no! We can fix this, we just have to get a little more thread, about that much. See, that's all we need to do. Now we're going to X knot it. any unraveling. Now we're gonna snip the excess yarn off. And we're going to come around in and now we're going to tie another knot. Another X knot. Pull it through. And we're done with the baseline. Now we're going to bend this just a little bit so that we have like guitar strings. All right, now we can take our decorative yarn, which is the other color we picked, and unravel a bit. All right. Good. Now for the weaving motion, you go over baseline number one, under baseline number two, over baseline number three, pull the yarn through. And then for first and last yarns, you wanna make an X knot around baseline number one. Just like this. You can scooch that X knot up and then pull the weaving tight. Taut. Under baseline number three. Over baseline number two. Under baseline under one, number one. Pull it through. And that's the weaving motion. Pull it taut. At the end, you'll see that there's like just a little bit, hang on, I've got to, hang on a minute, probably. 
over here. Forgot to snip this. Gonna snip that. Gonna put that there. And then you just repeat over baseline number one, under number two, over number three. Over time, you get better at it, and you can do more bigger weaves over baseline one, under baseline two, over baseline three, under baseline four, and so on. Make sure to pull it taut. Make sure you have that loop every single time you weave. That loop is important. Snip off the excess thread from... The baseline is a nice thing to have. You want the baseline to go well with the other colors, so don't do something like pink and red. Well, you, pink and orange. I mean, who would want a pink and orange blanket? I mean, not me, but it's your design. You can do whatever you want. All right, make sure you pull it tight and repeat over baseline one, under baseline two, over baseline three, pull. Under baseline three, over baseline two, under baseline one, pull. Notice that I'm get using less thread every time I make a weave. That will happen, and then you will run out of thread. I think my thread. Pretty soon. Make you always you don't want your weave to be too spaced out. You want it to be sort of looking like this. Oh, let's see. Okay. Oh dear, I've run out of yarn space. This is what you do. So you tie a knot here. You tie an X knot. To prevent this, I would recommend using, putting a really huge yarn, yarn thing when you start out of this yarn or the color yarn you use. It would make it easier and you would get more weaving in. So I'm not going to make that same mistake again. I'm going to get a lot of yarn. This is about the standard size, about this long when you pull it. I'm going to snip it. And you'll find that Another thing you would want uh, to do once, once you finish this, you want to look at the baseline number two and say, okay, that went under baseline two, now I want to go over baseline two. Then you would do it the exact same thing you did. Hang on, I'm going to redo that X knot since that X knot did not work. Huh, the X knot did not work. Sick humor. Hmm. We might actually have to do something I call a good knot. A good knot is when you tie when you tie a thread onto another thread to make it the thread longer. We are going to do that. You can do that. But it might be a bit difficult. Make sure you do the X knot. X knot it twice. Oh. 
like this. Make sure you pull it nice and tight. Oh, we don't want too tight. To make the yarn look nice, snip off the excess thread yarn. I would say yarn is better than thread because thread is nice and silky, which is good if you want not that, if you want like something to sew on, but for weaving, it just takes up way less room and there's a lot less of it and it's hard and it slips through your fingers. Now over, under, over, pull. That's the weaving motion. So again, we are making this blanket with the green thread. You can also make this blanket with this entire loom, but with an eight slit loom, you can make this or even this, which is alternating colors, which is something that you can do when you run out of thread. Also, you can switch to a different color. Anyway, pull through, drink break. Repeat. And if you do end up doing under, over, it will just pull through and unravel your work, which is not what you want. So you do over, under, over, under, over, under. Now we're going to do that and to pull this through, pulling through, making sure we get that loop. And once we do get that loop, Gonna tug on it a bit gently, letting it rest on the baseline. Like how something might rest on a counter. The baseline is something you use to actually make the weave. You could do over, under, wait, I forgot my baseline. I can't do the weave. You can't do that. You can't forget the baseline. You have to have the baseline to do the weave. Again, over, under, over under, over, under. That's the basic logist of weaving. Go, go opposite, over, under, over. It's a pattern, just follow the pattern. You get something nice. That's basically how weaving works. And you do get something nice. You get a blanket or you get a rug. But you can make a blanket, but it would just be as, you would have to have a cardboard loom as big as a table. No, I'm actually not kidding. And it would be a lot of slots. And a lot of thread. Oh no! Oh dear, this is not good. It's called an accidental knot. Now there are three ways you can handle this. Number one, don't pull it. If you pull it, it makes it tighter and harder to get out. Number two, see if you can loosen it and pull it out. And worst case scenario, Clip it out using your scissors. Now I don't think this is going to be a problem because it's out. Okay, they normally won't be as easy as that. But try and prevent tangles because tangles usually result in accidental knots.
As you can see, the weaving is coming along quite well as the perks of having a very long thread now come. And we're going to scooch that up. If you can, try and prevent too much tightness. Just let it rest on there like you would rest your head on a pillow. You're not cramming your head into the pillow, making it bulge on the sides. You're just resting on it, letting it cool your head and comfort it. Imagine the baseline here and here. That's the pillow. The, the decorative thread is you, and you are resting your head on pillow number on pillow A, this is pillow B, and this is the bed. The bed is where the over and the under happen. Pillow A in the bed is where the over and the under ha happen. This one is sort of like, it alternates. Bed and pillow A, bed and pillow B. It's always the bed, you have to let it Make on the bed, rest on the bed. Weaving is relaxing to do and it really takes stress off. You don't really have to think about things like, and you can just focus on weaving and have a clearer head when you're done. It's really relaxing to do. If you do decide to take up weaving, I highly congratulate you. It's really fun to do. You can do all sorts of patterns and colors. You can weave p actual patterns, not just like a simple light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, like I did, which is one of my weaving masterpieces. But looks like we're running out of thread a bit. All right. Should have enough room for one more before I have to tie it on. Once again, we're going to take our decorative thread and we're going to oh unwind. Hey, we're doing pretty good here. We're gonna push that up a bit, and we're about halfway done with the weave. If you are following along, I congratulate you. Hopefully, you are listening and taking advice and having a nice drink and listening to some music. I would recommend Amazon Music. It's a nice place you can find music on. Take your scissors, snip off the excess. Whenever you do a knot, you do that. Put it in your scraps. But a key thing is to remember to not throw the scraps out. Because if you throw the scraps out, then it's like, eh, I'm discarding this yarn because I only care about the good yarn, not like this trash yarn. Ugh. You do have to care about all of the yarn because if you tie all of this, it becomes a really beautiful piece of yarn. And I did, and I got this yarn, all of these, it was a 40, it was a set of 40 acrylic yarns. They're all about this size. I got it on Amazon. Good deal. If you can find a nice bag that you can hold your loom and your yarn in, that's great. I will be very happy if that happens. I'm going to work more on this. Hey, it's really coming together. We're about, let's say, half, three quarters of the way done because we are going to scooch this yarn up when we're all done. Take the baseline off of the loom, but we'll get to that when we're done. I 
make sure you don't cut, catch your yarn on anything else. You might include that anything else in your weave, which will disrupt the baseline, which is not good. If you do like weaving, you can take up knitting. I've never tried it. It's a bit more complicated, I am presuming, but I guess if you are into yarn crafts, you might like that. But I like weaving personally. It's relaxing for the body and the mind and the spirit and nice to do. Pulled too hard. That's not good. It's easily fixable, though. Little by little, your yarn will decrease. And then you'll have to tie on another string to the yarn that decreased, or just start another string entirely. So it doesn't look like a weird batch of like lots of space, no space at the end. You want to watch out if that happens and see if you can scooch up your yarn a bit. Or let go of some yarn. Remember, rest it like your head on a pillow. The decorative yarn is you, your head, and... When you loop it on, that's your head, and that is your pillow. You have two pillows and a bit of bed space, and you like to alternate between it. Imagine that. That's basically what weaving is doing. The yarn is resting its tired head on the baseline pillow. Let's check. Oh, yeah, we got plenty of yarn left. And now that you know the over, under, over, under, pull when you're done sort of pattern, you can easily now, you can make better, bigger yarns, you can move on from this, go on, work at these, and then get to another, make another loom now that you know the basics. And just all in all, just like level up in a video game. You're leveling up your weaving. And it's really, it's also a sense of pride and niceness when you see it and it's done and it's really nice and it looks really nice and it looks really great. And you, you're proud of yourself because you made that. You can have that sense of accomplishment. And that's really great about weaving. Great stress reliever. You get faster at it, but it isn't exactly a speed of light type of process. There's things you do, tying knots, threading, weave, weaving, baseline, making the loom. It's a complicated process, but if you know it well, you can truly become a weaving master. If you do decide you want to weave, you can practice a bit every day, have a good time, rest your head on an actual, your actual head on an actual pillow at night, play with friends, all in all have a good time. Hey, we're going pretty nicely now. We're looking like this with the weave. 
This is the back of the loom. This is the Amazon symbol. Thank you again, Amazon, for the wonderful box, box guide, cutting guidelines. It's fun, it's exciting, it's nice. Earring the end of the thread and the loom and the baseline. And once we do get to the end, I'll show you what to do. And going to get a, just a little bit more thread, like this much, not as much as before. Tie our X knot in the thread, keep the thread going. Snip off the excess, put it in your scrap pile. Remember, don't throw your scrap pile out. You never know when you're going to need it, you know? Tie them all together. Tie all the scraps together, make, make new type of yarn. Call it the scrappery. Aren't I funny? Getting to the difficult stage now. Now we're almost done. It's exciting, isn't it? We have our pink example of what it will look like when we're all done. Call this weave done. Now we're going to clip off some of this thread. That X knot that we made at the beginning. It's a large X knot, so yeah. Now we're going to take this side and we're going to bend this forward and take this out. Take it out. Now we gotta be very careful at this part. Handle it like you would a baby. Now we're going to, now we're going to snip this loop. And we're gonna snip the other loop. Now we're going to pull the weave that's there down. Gonna tie them together in an X knot. We're gonna do the X knot again. And then we're gonna scooch this down so it's more evenly spread. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now we're gonna snip the excess thread off. And 
and then we're gonna snip the knots that we used off. And we're done. And then it looks like this, about equal in size. And then we are done. Make our scrap pile again. We're gonna put our yarn away. Back in its place. And we're done. Thank you so much for watching, but don't leave now. Stick on for the credits and pass the credits. You'll get a special bonus surprise. Thanks for watching, guys. Mommy, that was such a beautiful blanket. I know, darling. Oh, I think I have my agent calling. There's some sort of fight going on in the kingdom. I'll be back soon. Bing, boom, bing. Boop. Oh, hi, Tasha. Hey. Why don't we steal the blanket that Penelope's making? What do you mean? She already made it. Oh no. If your sister or daughter is trapped in a time loop, call this number, 1-888-KITTY-TIME-LOOP. Thank you. Bye. Now, Tasha. Bizap. Huh? Wait. What? Oh no, I was stuck in a time loop, wasn't I? I think we're still in it. Dun, 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 dun! That was such a terrible bonus scene. I know, it was terrible, bazoop. Kids, I'm your mother. 